Good morning in there, out there, out there, in there. I'm in here, out here. Ah, here's Viv. Hi, Vivi. Did you have a good walk? Did you? You and Julie? Yeah. Julie's back there. There wouldn't be any of this. A slurp. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome to slush season, huh? Ooh. <laughs> Here we have those beautiful snowfalls. Now we have beautiful fog. But the, oh my goodness, the slush and the ice and the slush and the slush and the ice yesterday. Ha. Huh? <sighs> well, welcome to Sentimental. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mariana. Proud of you guys. Gee whiz. Ah, well, that's it. I had nothing to say. Well, I never had anything to say. <laughs> so that's part of what it's about, huh? You know, one of the funny uh, things about moving is yesterday we got to, we get the uh, New Yorker magazine. And yesterday we got two editions, January 29th. That's pretty much up to date, huh? January 29th. This one is December 11th. So this is uh, the holiday issue. And I gotta catch up. Jeez. Yeah, this is a holiday issue. Of course, it's falling apart as well. So, that's part of moving, isn't it? Yeah. We're pretty well painted. Julie's sister's doing a wonderful job downstairs. She's painting the uh, lower level which is this wonderful big lower level. It has a workroom and a TV, where the TV is. Need more slurps. Ah, mm -hmm. Daughter, wonderful daughter Meredith has been staying with us. Look what I'm reading. It's about time, huh? A banned book. <gasps> Huckleberry Finn. Isn't it? Well, I guess it's fun to say what uh, what you've never read. <laughs> I've never read Huckleberry Finn. You want me to list the rest? No, no, no. Here's my best buddy. Good girl. She wondered why we weren't waking up this morning. The fog was in, and oh, boy, it's good for. Some Good for the sleeping stuff, you know. She, when she goes out into this, of course she comes in, she's all snowballs. I wish I could show you a photograph. As the snow gets on, you know, this kind of fur, including this fun face, and she's just snowball covered. She should be in the Macy's Parade or something, you know. She's just, it's, it's a great picture. I get calls from, uh, my buddy Max Milo, he, he and his brother, who's a father, Catholic father, Father Paul, Max's brother, Father Paul, they're down in the Keys, they go every year. And I get these calls from him. And uh, we call it a radio show. And it's a good thing that nobody tunes in because I don't know that anybody know what was going on, but... Uh, <laughs> But he calls uh, from the, uh, you know, he had, the other day he had the nerve to call me. Well, I'm out there standing in the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, well, I'm standing knee deep in the snow and the slush and the... <laughs> Thanks for that. Gee whiz, I tell you. Ah, well, mm-mm-mm. I was uh, supposed to speak at a a community last Sunday. They meet every Sunday morning. Couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. And they were so kind about it. Oh, no, no, don't worry. Don't, you know, don't drive. It was only about 25, 30 miles north, but wow. Couldn't get out of the driveway. Our driveway's a long lane anyway, and then at the end it goes up to the, to the house. Mm, no. 
and you, that last one, Julie is wonderful, of course. She puts ashes from the fireplace down out there. and We've so far been able to get the car into the garage, so far. Yep. Um, I had, it was interesting last night. One, one of our uh, dear friends um, had us over for, oh my gosh, can he buy the cheese? Whew. And then I make a fool of myself, and it's awful, and I don't realize it till I come home, and I feel like, oh, man, I should have had a trough. That was, uh, no, man. Yeah. You know, good wine and crackers and bread and cheese. And and you know what, what he said? We I just happened, somehow something came up because we never want to talk about uh, the state of the, <laughs> the state of the political world or any of that stuff. I like to look out the window. Yeah. But he actually said, I'm frightened. This is a guy who's as stoic as they come. Walks miles every day. I've never heard him say something like that. I'm I'm really scared. Boy. And uh, yeah. So uh, are you? I you know I guess I I have to say I am. We are. It's odd to live through. You know, you're trying to live your everyday thing and you're not under physical attack or anything. <laughs> ah, boy. I don't understand the uh, the mean stuff. Well, that sounds inane. That, well, what doesn't? <laughs> ah, boy. The... Uh, the interesting thing about this place where I was going to speak is that uh, they have this thing that I've thought about for a long time, that in, in the United States, it seems like theology is first, and what kind of religion and denomination and catechism, and you have to be right, and you're wrong. I don't remember Jesus being terribly religious. He was always, it seemed like he was just wanting to heal and help and tell parables to help people think about things. Um, and then somehow it got all wrapped up into, oh, your theology. And so theology, it feels like a power thing over top of everything else, you know? When our plumbing goes wrong, we don't call the seminary. No. And uh, when the lights go out, the other night the power, we lost power about a week ago, we didn't call the seminary. No. Mm -mm. And, you know, when I had this serious neck operation, they didn't take me to the seminary. You ever play Bananagrams? <laughs> Check it out. Great game. No, it doesn't require a screen. Mm -hmm. I heard a great thing on NPR the other day. There, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I came home one time. We did, Julie and I, Christmas. And our parents had gotten this amazing thing that they hooked up to their TV or something, right? Wasn't it something like that? Mm -hmm. And we played a thing called Pong and uh, Space Invaders. And these things would come down from space like this. <laughs> and you'd try to hit them with something like this. <laughs> oh. Do you know they now have <coughs> retro games? You can get those. Retro. You know how everything cool is retro? Oh no, gaming. <laughs> retro gaming. Mario Party. Wow. Vivi's nose. Slurp. 
over retro. <sighs> oh boy. So get bananagrams. But we still have Clue. Do I have Clue? The game called I'm George Goebel. <laughs> now, hope I know what I'm talking about there. No, my dear friend Jim Alice uh, teaches in the prisons. Boy, the stories he tells. And they had a wonderful thing in Grand Rapids. They had a showing of one of the prisoners' art in this little storefront gallery museum in a section of Grand Rapids. And he was there via phone and um, speaker, and they could talk to him from the prison. And I've seen his art, it's quite remarkable. And he's in prison. Oh boy. We had the deer on the ice the other day. They were out here on the ice. That was fun to watch. They really go. They weren't Bambi. They were they were quite comfortable on the ice, that's for sure. Yeah. Um no, it sounds odd. I don't understand war. Do you? I don't. I don't. I don't. Just you have a place to live. Why do you need that? I don't. Know. Power people. I don't get them. When something happens, huh? wish we could fix them. Make them. Wish we could make them nice. Hmm? Yeah. Wish we could make them nice. See, this is nice. Look at this. They're all curled up. You can't bet you can't even see her. Oh, she peeking out. Hello. Plunk. Julie's at her spinning wheel. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, I wish I could turn the camera so you could see. <sighs> Just creates quiet and peace. It's the most wonderful thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's such... John Jacob Jingle Hunt me. My name too. Mm, 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 mm. Wow. Today I get to work with a couple of people, Jane Bob, Greg Rapley on the poems. I have one about Monet. Jim Ellis gave me a book about Monet. And they're going to help me with that poem. And then this afternoon with Caprice Garvin from New Jersey, it'll be Zoom. We'll talk. Well, how about a basketball poem that's a winter poem. It's, uh, I think it's the last poem in this book. This is the uh, publisher who's going to publish the next book, Kevin Carey Press. Most wonderful people. I think they're just made of kindness and love and understanding and they go, you're what, for you, what can we do for you? Yeah, this is, this is the last poem in the book. It's page 89. called Night Gym, N-I-G-H-T, night, you know, night gym. The gym is closed, locked for the night. Through the windows, a quiet beam from the street lights lies across center court. The darkness wraps itself around the trophies, lies softly on coach's desk, settles in the corners. A few mice scratch under the stands and at the door of the concession booth. The night wind rattles the glass in the front doors. The furnace, reliable as grace, sends its steady warmth through the rafters, under the bleachers, down the halls, into the offices and locker rooms. Outside the snow falls, swirls, Piles up against the entrance. Take care. Try to be cheerful. Be kind. Remember Fizzy Vivi's nose. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thanks, Julie. <laughs>